The other day, Matt from Linux Cast got himself into a bit of a beef with the app image fans. I'm at the point right now that if you only offer your app as an app image, I'm not installing your app. Flat pack or bust. And right on cue, Pro Bono PD shows up. You may know him from great posts such as this here. Think twice before abandoning Xorg. Wayland breaks everything. I've done a video on this. It's a interesting post to say the least. But much more relevant in this case is he is the creator and one of the core maintainers of app images. Now I'm not going to read the entire thread here. If you'd like to do that, I'll leave that linked down below. What I want to do instead is focus on a sub-thread in here going over some of the issues with app images. And in response to Matt, Pro Bono said this, Good, because app images don't need to be installed. In fact, they have especially been engineered not to be installed. Who needs installations after all? Just download one file, set the executable bit, and run. Easy. I don't know why he seems to always talk about app images in this fashion. This is the kind of thing I would be sent if I was going to do an ad for app images. Every time he talks about them, it's in this, like, marketing, advertising fashion. It's not a problem. It just comes off really, really weird and kind of disingenuous sometimes. But regardless, when we're talking about the way that I want to be using app images, yeah, they're pretty much just pick up and run. Assuming that you're using a glibc system and you have libviews 2 installed, unlike things like Ubuntu, for example. Or if we're talking about glibc, there is a couple of Linux distros like Alpine, for example, and then there's the BSDs where, you know, they're not exactly going to work. But for the sake of this video, let's keep ourselves confined to the places where app images do work. Most people on Linux don't use Linux like I do. Most people use a pretty desperate environment like GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon, whatever PopOS is doing nowadays. You know, they have this like weird Rust thing they're doing on the Wayland side. And when you're a user of a desktop environment, you expect certain things to happen when you install a new application. And this user points out things that app images don't really address. App image is a good idea, but it's got its problems. It doesn't create a shortcut in the menu, sometimes it doesn't have an app icon, and the worst part is that you have to manually re-download the app to update it. If you create an app image manager, that would make a big difference. Now, out of the box, if you install a new system and you download an app image and try to run it, all of these issues are completely true. However, nowadays there is also some extra tooling available to alleviate these problems, albeit not in the most convenient fashion possible. So, when it comes to shortcuts in the menu, personally I just like to double click the file in the file manager, but if you need menu integration, then we have this available. I have not used the applications available here, so I cannot speak for their quality. However, briefly looking over them, it does seem like they're going to mostly do the job. Or at the end of the day, if none of these do exactly what you want, you could always go and manually make a desktop entry. But that's not really a convenient way of handling it. Now for the second problem, app icons. If your file manager does not have native app image support yet, ask them for it. Then you can use XApp Thumbnailers, this one right here in Kaja, Nautilus, Nemo, PCMan.fm, and Thunar. I have never heard of this tool before, but I guess it should pretty much do the job. But Dolphin not being on this list kind of cuts out most of the KDE users. Now I want to make it clear, I personally like app images. But even knowing this tooling exists, I can understand why app images might be a big turnoff. Let's say you go and download a email client, for example. Doesn't matter what it is, just a generic email client. And you download it through your traditional package manager. Well, once it's been installed, you expect that a desktop entry is going to be automatically made. And in most cases where things are packaged properly, they are going to be made. And this isn't just the case with your traditional package manager, it's going to happen with your flat packs and snaps as well. So you have the option of installing the application and then everything is just going to be managed automatically. When you uninstall the application, your desktop entry is going to be automatically removed. 
or you have the option of downloading an application, making it runnable in a very simple way, you just make it executable, but all of the extra stuff to make it integrate into your desktop environment, that stuff has to be done with extra tools in a more manual fashion. Which one seems more convenient to work with? As for the third issue of manually updating the application, you don't actually have to do that. Manually re-download the app to update it. It's a feature, not a bug. I'll get into this in just a moment. Update only when you have an active need to update an app. You keep the old version in addition to the new one until you know that it works for you. It's by design, but also there is this. App image update. This is basically an automated way to re-download the newest version based on the metadata inside of the app image. So assuming they have their, you know, original download link set up properly in a way that you can just download the next version, theoretically, this should work. But that obviously has its problems and relies on the people hosting the app image to actually set it up properly, which you can't always guarantee happening, especially when they're not hosting on places like GitHub, for example. But there are also tools to integrate it with your desktop environment, so on GNOME, for example, so you can have this little option in your context menu to update the app. But if this exists, you may be wondering why you had never heard of it. Well, it's very much beta software right now, and the latest stable release was in January of this year. I say stable kind of loosely because it was an alpha release. Now, there is a continuous build available. So this is going to be built off of the latest version available in the Git. I wouldn't rely on something like that if you need your system continuously working. If you want to go and, you know, try it out and see what happens but I wouldn't do so myself. I think once this is generally considered stable software though, assuming you're using app images that can actually be, you know, automatically updated, this seems like a pretty useful tool to go and use. But that never needed to be a manual process anyway. Take a look at something like Flatpaks. Flatpaks have a tool to go and automatically update them, but you only download the update when you want to download the update. If you never want to update your Flatpaks, you never have to do that. Plus, you can also downgrade to an older version. But as I said, I do like app images, and they certainly have their advantages. For example, the point is, I consider apps which don't have to be installed way better than normal installed apps. One app equals one file, like a text file or a doc file. Simple, once again, he's speaking like it's an ad. No installation, no package manager, no nothing, just one simple file. So assuming you're using a system that actually supports app images, they're not just portable as in they will run on a bunch of different systems, they are portable as in they are very easy to move around. When you have a Flatpak, for example, even if you still have the Flatpak ref file, you still need to go and reinstall the Flatpak. With an app image, if it's still executable, you can just go and run it pretty much any way you want, on pretty much any supported system. But treating an app like a regular file leads to a really weird interaction flow. One simple file, you have to go to your file manager to launch. That's not where apps are launched from. So I have a dozen apps installed in a traditional way that appear in the menu where they're supposed to. And one that shows up in the file manager, no, that's not good. And Probono says, well, I launch apps by double clicking on them in the file manager, which kind of makes sense considering that your desktop looks like a scuffed version of macOS. For anyone out there who hasn't used macOS, macOS has this thing called the applications folder. When you install a new application, it is generally expected for it to be placed in this folder. And like any other folder on your system, it can be accessed through your file manager. This is not inherently a bad workflow. The reason why it works on macOS is everything on your system is accessible in this folder. Linux, on the other hand, doesn't have this consistent user experience. You're going to have some applications in your applications folder, some of them in your GUI shortcuts menu, some of them you have to open up through like a terminal. It's not a consistent experience, and adding more and more of these makes it more and more confusing. I think App Image is a great example of designing around the maintainer's specifications. 
not thinking about the way that other people are going to be using their system, which is quite common in the FOSS space. Take for example a random window manager. If you want to go and make a window manager, generally the reason why you do this is the other tools available don't exactly fit your needs. So when you design this tool, you're going to design it around exactly what you need. And when someone else tries to start using that tool, it may not be as flexible as they would like to see. And that's totally fine when it comes to a window manager, because there are so many tools available. But when it comes to something that needs to be used for these generic use cases, you don't know if it's going to be for an email client, you don't know if it's going to be for someone who uses the shortcuts menu, or if they open stuff up from a file manager. Generally what you want then, is to have all of the common workflows available. And in a vacuum, App Image would be a great system. It deals with the containerization issue that applications like OBS, bottles, and things like that need, but it's not in a vacuum. It exists alongside things like flat packs and to a lesser extent snaps. I'm gonna focus on flat packs though, because I actually like them. What benefit do you get using an app image over a flat pack if you want that desktop integration? Sure, you can do it with an app image. But why would you do it with the app image when it's automatically done with the flat packs and more developers are packaging things as a flat pack? I use both of these. I don't care about desktop integration. I open everything up from D menu. But if I did care about this, I know which one I would be choosing. So let me know. Where do you stand on app images? Do you use them? Do you hate them? Do you even know they exist? And what about flat packs and snaps? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe Story Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and... Amen.